On December 23rd, 2018, the Carolina Hurricanes took the ice for a game against the Boston Bruins. Something was different though. They weren't wearing their usual red, white, gray, and black. Instead, they were wearing green, blue, and white. The fans were in on it too, with many of them showing up in those colors for the game. The Hurricanes were having a throwback night and took the ice as a past identity that the hockey world hadn't seen play a game since 1997. Hey guys, it's Harrison, and welcome back to Awkward Sports History. We got some hockey action on the channel today as we take a look back at the awkward history of the Hartford Whalers. And before we get started, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. The Whalers started off as the New England Whalers in 1972 when the World Hockey Association, or the WHA as I will call it for this point on in the video, had its first season. They played the first couple seasons in Boston before moving to Hartford in 1974. They would keep the New England Whalers name until 1979. The Whalers first season would be the best season in the team's entire history. They finished first in the WHA Eastern Division and defeated the Winnipeg Jets to win the AFCO World Trophy, which goes to the champion of the WHA every season. The Whalers were extremely consistent in their WHA years. They made the playoffs every single season, they reached the semifinals four times, and they even made it back to the finals one time. The Jets, however, did get their payback the second time around. The Whalers managed to bring in a couple of big names too. Two of the most noble examples who came to Hartford are Hall of Famers Gordie Howe and his son Mark, and they would stay with the team when they transferred over to the NHL. Throughout the entire league's history, the WHA had been in talks to merge with the NHL. In March 1979, the NHL and the WHA agreed to a merger deal. The NHL owners originally rejected the deal by a slim margin, but after a massive boycott across Canada of Molson Brewery products that hurt the pocketbooks of some Canadian teams, including the Montreal Canadiens who were owned by Molson at the time, those owners changed their minds and the merger happened. This might be one of the most Canadian things I've ever read about. Some city is losing their hockey team, so they boycott a national corporation and they win. Oh jeez, they're getting rid of our hockey, what are we gonna do? I got an idea, so you know how we normally spend like $8 on a beer at a hockey game? Yeah, so? Well, um, what if we didn't do that? Actually, that might work. The Whalers were one of four WHA teams that moved over to the NHL when the merger happened. The other teams that moved over to the NHL were the Winnipeg Jets, the Quebec Nordiques, and the Edmonton Oilers. The Whalers had a bit of a makeover for their NHL debut. They ditched the New England Whalers name and replaced it with the now known Hartford Whalers name. The Boston Bruins were already not a fan of having to share the region, so this name change helped settle things a little bit. The name change also meant a new logo. They ditched the W with the harpoon going down the middle and replaced it with the classic logo most people remember. Lastly, they tweaked their color scheme from green, gold, and white to the classic green, blue, and white. The Whalers would join the Norris Division of the Wales Conference. Okay, that couldn't have worked more perfectly that the Whalers joined the Wales Conference. You know what I mean? There was also a lot of potential for the Whalers heading into their first NHL season. They had four future Hall of Famers on the team. Gordy and Mark Howe, Dave Keon, and later in the season they picked up Bobby Hall. This sounds great until you realize that three of these four Hall of Famers were way past their prime. Gordie Howe, for example, had been playing since 1946, and we're coming up on the year 1980. Nothing worked for the Whalers, and they never had the same success as they did in the WHA. In their 18 seasons in the NHL, they made the playoffs eight times. They actually made the playoffs more times than they had winning seasons, which they only did three times. Think about it, the Whalers were three times more likely to make the playoffs than they were to finish the season with a winning record. That's completely unheard of. The NHL does have a long history of letting an insane amount of teams into the playoffs. 16 teams qualified for the playoffs back when there were only 21 teams in the entire NHL. There is a reason that the playoffs haven't been expanded in a really long time. In 2019, it was still 16 teams that made the playoffs, but now there's 31 teams, soon to be 32. But hey, the playoffs are the playoffs, and they were showing the NHL that they made the right decision to include the Whalers in the merger. So the Whalers get a new owner in 1994, and from the second he buys the team, everyone is in doubt that he's going to keep the team in Hartford. And last time I checked, the Whalers aren't in Hartford anymore, so let's see how that all panned out. 
For starters on why things didn't look great, new owner Peter Carmanos pledged to keep the Whalers in Hartford for at least four years. That really isn't much of a confidence booster when you hear a number that's less than five years in the mind of the owner. The Whalers had other issues too. Attendance wasn't the best, but they were never last in attendance. There are teams that are still currently around today that had worse attendance than the Hartford Whalers had at that time. It's a small market team in a region where they certainly weren't the most popular team. That title definitely goes to the Boston Bruins. They also dealt with the classic relocation issue where an owner is just not happy with the current arena. There were negotiations made for a new downtown arena, but even then, Carmanos didn't seem serious about even making the deal. He kept asking for concessions to help him out for the three years the new arena was being built, and those concessions caused the whole deal to fall apart. Relocation was imminent. Hartford didn't know where the Whalers were going yet, but they knew the last game of the 1997 season would be the last Hartford Whalers game. The Whalers played their last game on April 13, 1997 against the Tampa Bay Lightning at home in Hartford. The Whalers gave the home crowd exactly what they had hoped for when they beat the Bolts 2-1 to go out as winners. Shortly after, Carmanos announced the Whalers would be moving to North Carolina and have been the Carolina Hurricanes ever since. The Hurricanes have had some success. They won the Stanley Cup in 2006, but they have also had their fair share of attendance problems and being outnumbered by opposing fans. To be honest, if I was a Hartford Whalers fan, I would have been angry knowing that none of these things improved but by moving to Carolina. They might as well have stayed in Hartford. The Whalers are all but a memory now, but the Hurricanes as of late have done more to honor its history. It's actually way better than most relocated teams do when it comes to recognizing their history. They hang Whalers retired numbers from the rafters, and they started wearing Whalers uniforms for select games like I talked about at the beginning of the video. And I guess that brings us full circle. So there you have it. That's the awkward history of the Hartford Whalers. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Harrison. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time.